some of the music today, I don't get it. I don't get it. But it's something that everyone loves. Um, but do they? That's the more critical, critical question. Okay. Okay. I think the bigger question, I think, is do they care about music? Ooh. So I think that, well, no, they don't. If, if, yeah. if I'm honest, now you said that, no. Killer Killer Podcast. Killer Killer Official You need the Kellervision app. 24 7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. One, two, one, two. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, how are we? Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London, central as you need to be, want to be, choose to be. Yeah. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Hold tight, everyone's got the television app free download. You know what it is, sporting art for your street culture needs. It goes without saying. With every guest that comes in, I always feel very lucky, but particularly this time because uh, not only is this a lady that I've seen come up from a really early, reasonably early stage and um, frequented, acquainted and became friends with, but also she's doing crazy things at the moment in terms of work output, um, sentiment, uh, passion in her uh, lyrics, emceeing for days. Furthermore, uh, with a conscious head to go with it, Daya inside the place. That was a nice intro. Serves you go right. That was, that was brilliant. Thank you very much. You sold. That was, that was mad. Love that. It was a while. When I was trying to think back, um, it must have been about three years ago, wasn't it? When we yeah, did it was. Freestyle 20, 2019, 2018 or 2019. Pretty sure. Yo. So it was a live stream show. It was, it was one of the first... Television live stream shows. Yeah, it was sick. Yeah, Loved where it. where I basically pushed the elevator button and the thing went up <laughs> and you just couldn't control it. <laughs> it was. Do you know what? I wasn't expecting to for it to be the way it was, yeah. but I loved it. There was just like the vibe was sick as well. Mm. You never know the vibe you're gonna get in certain places, but the vibe was. Um, yeah, I loved it. I had a good time. Yeah, it yeah. bumped. Yeah. Um, I think that I think the the moral of that is. When you meet an artist that goes with goes through the motions with you, mm. ain't OTT, ain't like, you know, like I say, Sasha Fierce, it ain't like yellow M&Ms downstairs in the backstage. <laughs> like, you were totally in it. Yeah. And, and I think that's why we stay connected because, it's you know, it's true. like yeah, real, yeah, yeah. real recognise is real. And I felt welcome. Sometimes you go to events and you feel like you're there just to do what you're supposed to be doing there. Mm. But I felt included and just part of the family dynamics so yeah it was, it was, it was sick dynamics. that's what it was family mm. vibes big shout out to Leekan as well yeah shout yeah. out to Leekan of course hold yeah. tight hold yeah. tight oh he told me to say hi oh big up hold tight Leekan yeah listen yeah, yeah. That's family right now. Yeah, it is. It is it and is. also, actually, you know what? Pedigree comes into this as well because mm -hmm. when someone at Leakin introduces you, it's like, oh, yo, that's. Oh, yo, and you know what else we did? Yeah, 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 yeah. We yeah. did the track as well, didn't we? Oh, we did. We did. Yeah. Oh, do you know what? That was the. F that That's the fastest I think I've ever rapped. I had to rap quick. Smacked I had it. to rap quick for that one. That's the f normally I'm, I'm that. normally quite mellow, but that one pushed me. But I loved it. That was sick. That was yeah. sick. Yeah. Yo, now it's all flooding back to Do me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I was thinking on the way here, I was like, yo, because mm. I haven't been up here since, like I said, the show. Mm. Not the show, uh, well, the show, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, and coming up here is bare memories. Mm. Good ones. Yeah, good ones. Hold yeah. tight. Hold yeah. tight. The regulars have got a television business. You know how we're doing <laughs> it. Got new episodes of the live stream coming up soon as well. But we'll talk about that later. Let's talk about what's been going on. Because if you guys have been living under a rock somewhere or, you know, just get to know Daya. There's a lot of things that are popping at the moment. Tunes are coming out left, right, and centre. Yes. Um, showcases, pieces, podcasts. I mean, like, you, uh, honestly, I can't keep up with it, man. Neither can I. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm so tired. But do you know what? I would not. I would not change it for anything. I actually, I'm enjoying myself a hell of a lot, and um, it's nice just to be doing music full time, mm. not having to balance it with anything else. Just, just doing music. Mm. Yeah, it's a blessing. For a lot of people to hear that, yeah, the idea of like full-time mm. artistry. Mm. There's a lot There's a lot at stake, isn't there? Making that transition from uh, 
Talk to me about that. It's scary. It's scary because you, you're you used to a certain way of life and a certain level of security. Mm. And then you know at any point, you know, once you've left that, that this path you're taking may or may not go the way you want it to mm. go. And then I, I did have in the back of my mind, uh, you know, am I going to have to go back to the job? Will they even let me go back to the job? Will I have to apply for a new job? You know, mm. all that goes to your head. But the main focus is... Uh, ultimately, mm. let me just smash this as much as I can. Yeah, it's almost like you're putting all your eggs in, let's go. Fully. All chips are in. Fully, fully, yeah. I, I remember that experience very vaguely. Um, you, Of course, you know, it all depends on your fi- financial or fi- family infrastructure, mm. but a lot of this is really a case of on your own head, mate, because... Oh, you yeah, know, fully, yeah, yeah, if yeah. You ain't, if you ain't bringing it in in the next six months, then you're definitely going to go then, back to the place you came from. Facts. <laughs> you literally have a, a short time frame. And I think at the beginning, it never really runs the way you want it to run. And that's when you think, yeah, maybe I need to just be sensible and balance. But not me. Mm. Nah. No, getting those Nike trainers early. You've got to wait at least four or five months before you know, oh, all right, this is okay. This is okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Big up Bob Villain, actually, because as I mentioned, like we, yeah. we, we, we frequent, me, me and him are good mates, and uh, I, I was telling him all about you uh, a couple of months ago. Um, and we were at an art exhibition, and, and he bought himself an art piece. Mm. It was of a sizable amount of money, respectfully. Mm. And, but he was like, no, 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 if I did the touring, mm. this may finish tomorrow. I want to show that I got something. Oh, wow. Isn't that cool? I like that. Yeah. I like that. That sounds like a bit of me, I think. I think that's something I would... Yeah, yeah. yeah. You I and like him that. share a very similar... I think there's a temperament mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take that. Explain, <laughs> take explain that. the temperament because um, the tone of your delivery, the, conscious in, the consciousness in which you approach the lyrics, mm. there's a lot of... There's a lot of experience that, that go into your mm. lyrics, more so than a lot of the other contemporaries out there at the moment. Yeah, I think it starts with what I listened to growing up, a lot of Queen Latifah, um, Yo-Yo, MC Light, A Tribe Called Quest. That kind of music for me is, is is it runs through me. That's what I listen to to this day. If you ask me who is well-known now in the charts, I wouldn't be able to tell you. Genuinely don't know. Mm. Unless I see someone's posted something about something, but I wouldn't know off my own back. And so I think just the, the content and knowing as a child how Queen Latifah's UNITY mm. or Wrath of My Madness spoke to me, I was like, oh my gosh. Mm. And it spoke to me more than, you know, Little Kim stuff. I respected Little Kim stuff and I love Little Kim, but the conscious flip over there mm. was was more of, of my thing. Um, and just the calmness. I think I have an ability to do the grime stuff or the faster stuff, but naturally me, I'm just calm. Mm. So that's how I just move with the music as well. Mm, that was a really defining era. Mm. Uh, oh my gosh, yeah. Uh, yeah like, and it was in native tongues, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. It's kind of Moni Love and Della and... Uh. Best for me, that's kind of wish I was born within that. I wish I was my age now within that era. Do you mm. know what I mean? Because music today, I'm not really, not really the biggest fan of it. But yeah, that that era was beautiful. Yeah, that's so interesting. You say that that you aren't a fan of. Well, uh, maybe that's a bit strong. I won't quote quote you on that. Mm. But I get where you're coming from. It's interesting though that because when I hear your music, it's so upfront. Mm. Like, you'd be deceived in thinking mm. that there is a lane that's that, and and one of change mm. that you're on to create for the masses now. I'd say that is a hundred percent correct, but I think unfortunately, in my mind and in my uh, small little lens, music these days has lost a lot of its depth unless you actively go and try and find that music the music that is on the surface that we are consuming because that's what's given to us mm. whether it's radio or what makes certain playlists and stuff yeah. the depth is 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 being lost and i think again from my lens people don't really want to hear lyricism anymore um 
they want to hear the vibe that comes around that. And very few lyrics put on on an instrumental or a beat or whatever. So I think, yeah, I will, in my music, always be up front and always speak to the masses from my point of view. I'll never dumb myself down. Mm. But the industry as it is now isn't my favourite place mm. to be. Mm. Yeah. When was it anybody's favourite place? That's the big point. Mean, Say no more. As in, like, the aforementioned, like, all those rappers that inspire you, mm. it's mad to think what L's they had to take. Oh, my gosh. A lot. Yeah. Must must have. Yeah. I mean, I've watched a fair few documentaries about, about their individual stories, but uh, when Queen Latifah brought out UNITY, the m- amount of nonsense she mm. got for that... Mm. Yeah, for me, that's one of her greatest mm. tracks. Mm. I mean, who are you calling a bitch? Like, yeah, just that, just... Come on. In those days, yeah. it, it was very um, controversial, A, for a female rapper to be... Rap- uh, a female to be rapping, mm. but to be calling people out on their shit as well. Yeah. It's a whole different... It's a whole different thing. But the way she did it was with grace, mm. I find. Mm. Whereas these days, I find music is, is, is almost... It's a lot of bitterness mm. and a lot of targeting as opposed to this teachable mm. kind of way mm. of, of connecting and delivering. Do you mm. know what I mean? Yeah. So that's that's what I miss a lot. Mm. Self-serving, uh, aggressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Using it as a this, tool almost. Tool, that's the word. Yeah, yeah. I'm this and I'm that and I hold this and you're this and this. this. It wasn't really that in, in, in MC that's lyrics mm. or yo-yo or, or Queen Latifah. I didn't really hear that too much. Mm. More into their YouTube views rather than their political views, almost. I might have to take... You dropped a bar earlier that I'm going to have to take and I'm going to have to take that one as well. I'm going to have to take that one. That was a good one as well. It's a good hey, one. Hey, listen, you know what I mean? I'm the girl, but this isn't, me, this isn't about me. I think the whole structure of this conversation kind of harks to a conversation we had just before the podcast. And it's interesting mm. that the world is the way it is right now where... On one hand, mm. uh, we'll put a post up about how we shouldn't be X, Y, Z, da, 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 da. But mm-hmm. actually, it's really hard to get get the demon out of people because mm. they really actually do think the opposite way. But they would rather have a, f- a shop front that suggests that they are positive. Hardly, yeah. hardly are so approachable and so, you know, they, they magnetise everybody that they approach and approaches them. But, but the truth is, is mm. like they ain't about everybody. Yeah, yeah. Totally agree. And I think you can see through it, though, almost. Mm. To to a tuned eye, you can see what's fabricated, what's not, what's real, what's not. But I agree, that's unfortunately makes up a good percentage of, of what we see now. Mm. You know, and trying to... I've always been told from young to be authentic. If you think this, you think this. If you think that, you think that. Mm. If you don't like this, you don't like that. And that's how, that's how I am. And again, why I love... The music of of that era because it was raw. Speaks the truth, isn't it? Truth, yeah, yeah, exactly. Not, I'm gonna speak half heartedly and and then contradict myself and then it, it's that for me is it mash, mashes my head up a little bit. Oh, it mashes my head up. Don't really have time for it. It mashes my head up because, on one hand, it's like Fifty Cent. Mm. Yeah, he grew up on Sugar Hill Gang. He grew yeah. up on Public Enemy. He grew up on stuff like that. Mm. But yet there's a plug that he's got himself into mm. or had got himself into mm. that in turn created this monster and sold it on a thing. And then you've got like your Takashi six nines and people like that, <laughs> even more recent yeah. that, that are just coming out of that. And again, it's just like self-serving, isn't it? It's, it's such an interesting, the timelines on this stuff, yeah. Yeah. but, but it's all, I guess music has just become content, hasn't it? And that's the thing it has, it, it's become content. It's become a, a product. And if I'm honest, if the industry did not want that kind of music, then that kind of music would not be yeah. running. Yeah. So they're facilitating whatever it is they want to to be consumed. And and I've always had that issue because there are artists I know who are insane music wise, lyrically, and all they're speaking about are good, wholesome things. Mm. Um, they may talk about darkness, but they're not bigging up the darkness. They're they're talking about the pain in the darkness to lead mm. them to the light. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, but you don't hear that stuff on on 
commercially. You don't hear that because the industry don't want to push that. And this is the battle, mm. unfortunately. It's an ongoing battle and it jars me. But <laughs> yeah. what can you do? Just what can try. You, do, man? you know what? There are some people that do pull it out the bag and actually are being super emotive and without mm. always realising it until they go and hang themselves or they go and... True. And you're like, oh, it's, shit. Yeah. Didn't know that was for real, for real. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. You're right. And I think... You know, although I'm 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 saying a lot of smack about the industry, which I probably will until it decides to sort itself out. There are artists like Getz, for example, yeah, yeah. who just speak rawness, mm. and he is he's doing work through his 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 lyricism, and like you've got Koji Radical, and mm. there, there's a whole li- little Sims. Mm. Please need mm, a moment mm. of pause. Yes, little please. Sims, yes. you know Hold that tight. that that. That's what I appreciate. That's what I admire. That's what I love. That's what I learn from. Um, but it's a small percentage. Mm. And it's sad, but that's why Day is here. Do you know what I mean? To, yeah. To do what I've got Come to on, do. Come on, we to talk. To do I've got to do. So when did it begin then? Let's talk about this. Like, how did we get to this point here where Day is like, you know, doing a thing and, you know, we're having a conversation. Where, where did it begin? Are we talking way back? Are we talking middle or? or... However way back you feel comfortable. Raw. Um, so I've always been into music from young, loved it. Uh, my pops and my mum equally fed into me different parts of musicality. My mum is an incredible writer mm. and my dad is just a genius when it comes to sound. London? Um, my mum's in Wales. Mm-hmm. My dad's Nigerian and he moved everywhere. Just London, Nigeria, Oxford, Wales, wherever he decided Cold. to settle for a bit. Um but music was just a part of of me and who I am and and who I was then, and just growing up with the that structure, I almost couldn't escape the fact that I had a gift with music, whether it was learning lyrics quickly, or being able to catch a flow quickly. Um, that that was my my thing, and I couldn't escape it. Doesn't matter what I went into, whether it was sports or English literature, whatever music ran through me. Mm. So. I just uh, tried my best to hold on to that dream while studying in school and, and all that shit. And being in Cardiff, that's where I grew up, didn't really have the facilities for that. Um, mm. Now they are growing within themselves and their industry, but it was hard growing up trying to do music. It was always, well, you need to go to London. Mm. You want to do that. And at a certain age, I can't just be going off to London at the age of 12, do you know what I mean? You said, so, you said school and all that shit. Talk mm. to me about school. Was there, was it, was that, was that hard? Was it easy? Was it boring? Was it? I went to a private school. Right. And um, it was very difficult. Very, very difficult. I just could not, I just didn't get it. I didn't get, there was a lot of wealth around, of course, being private school, but my mum didn't come from wealth. She came from hard work. My mum mm. was homeless when she was 16 and built her whole life up from there, sort of said adios to mm-hmm. her family and, and, and did a thing. So coming from humble beginnings, if you will, and being in a school like that just was very hard to mm. configure in my head. Mm. And then also I think just knowing that if I mentioned I like to do music, they would say, okay, well, Guildhall do music, classical music. They didn't did, really there was, there was a really getting it, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Sense. Didn't quite get it. So, yeah, it was it was hard. It was hard being at school. Um, and I wasn't really good at much. I just wanted to, to rap. That's literally what I wanted to do. And being told, like, rap's not a job or rap's not a career. You can't do rap. People who rap are on drugs or people who listen to rap are on drugs, mm. <laughs> like, you know? So... Yeah, it was difficult, but that's what I'm saying about maintaining that dream throughout mm, all of yeah. that shit. Yeah. Um, was the was the boarding school in Wales? Wales. Yeah. Wales is yeah. You know what? And this is the thing as well because Wales has like a you know Shirley Bassey. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes, Tom yeah, Jones. Got Tom or, Jones as well. And all that yeah, shit. Yeah. All that shit. But <laughs> it, but for real, like there is a certain. There's a certain show up to that level of music, and I'm pretty sure if you're in a private school, that's probably a lot of the thing. Pass you on down that line. Yeah. That rap thing don't make that's, I get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And do you know what is as when you're in London or 
outskirts of London where I'm, I'm living now, there are facilities, there's something that from my experience, there's something going on somewhere where you can go and network or you can go and speak to someone or sure. you can go to different shows. In Cardiff, there was like three rap shows a year and you wouldn't know about it unless someone else told you about it. They're not mm. gonna, they didn't advertise that stuff. They weren't posters. Whereas if it was dubstep, drum and bass, and I do love me some dubstep and drum and bass, one of my favorite genres, uh, <laughs> drum and bass. But um, if it was drum and bass or techno, those things be advertised here, there and everywhere. Mm. Classical music the same, but rap just wasn't, and still now it's, hasn't I feel you. lifted. Yeah, it hasn't London, lifted. You know, sometimes you're just like, oh, it's tonight? Oh, it's yesterday? Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. Yeah, totally agree. So having that was was hard and then trying to maintain that dream in my head when I'm not really seeing anyone else do anything um within that sector was like mm, maybe maybe it's not for me. Maybe my surroundings won't allow me to do that. So that only gay in the village kind of thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, pretty you much. No, nah, literally. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> yeah, I feel you. Hmm. I feel you. And I guess being in a boarding school was like an English girl in New York. It's like you get the you get the uh you get the curricula, yeah. you get, you know, the, the, the social groups and shit, but, like, do you really connect with anybody mm -hmm. on a level? Mm. Because you come up from a very different background, yeah. you're into a very different kind of thing, yeah. and they just ain't pairing you up with no. the right people. No, even just socially, yeah. Yeah. you know, I didn't, didn't get it. Yeah. I didn't get it. <sighs> yeah. So fast forward a little bit. Mm. Lyrics. Lyric, mm. lyric and lyric value. Yeah. Because, um, as I said at the top, there's a lot of thinking and a lot of assessment that's going on. How much of the how much of the things that you've gone through in your life influence? And this sounds cliche, mm. but it'd be good to get underneath the hood of it. Mm. Like, how much of it influences the lyrics. lyrics? Yeah, all of it. Really, I only write what I've been through. So anything you've heard or will hear is what I've been through, and that's unfortunately it's a blessing and a curse. Because if someone said to me, write a quick two two happy tune right mm. now, I would struggle. I have to have literally have had an argument with someone mm. to now go and write about the argument with someone. Or my mum would have to call me and say something that's bogus and me like, mum, why did you have to say that, man? And then for me to write something about it. So I uh, unfortunately and fortunately have to have an experience to mm. to write and that was just from from the get-go i started writing due to anger i had such anger because at home my childhood wasn't comfortable in the sense that my 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 dad grew up with discipline and violence therefore he uh put that on me as well and my mom worked so hard because she had nothing when she was younger that i barely saw her so I had a lot of anger built up and the school had said to, to my mum, she needs to do anger management. All right, cool, did that, didn't work. And I found myself going into writing. A teacher said to me, just try write down how you feel. And I wrote it down and she was like, boy, that's, <laughs> this is dark. <laughs> um, but I, I loved it. I loved that I could write something down. I didn't have to shout at someone or go and punch some girl in school randomly because I felt a way mm. to do so. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I thought, yo, this writing thing's cool. Mm. I like it. So not only was it the fact that I enjoyed music from childhood, I realised actually it's, it's aiding me as well as I grow. Mm, it's interesting you say that because Adele, it's, here's another, you know, generalisation. Yeah, but, and she, you know, arguably, although writing with co-writers, some of the best stuff she wrote was like when she was through Heartbreak, those mm. classic albums. And there are, there's a certain temperament to artists that go that route there's some people that totally put on this persona yeah and to the celebratory persona of like yes i've made it you know before you know yeah. but there's still these when it comes to the crunch though that there's still these um strings these shackles that mm -hmm. are attached to uh certain periods in their lives that you know help form and shape their drive and ambition and the reasons of why course. To, you can you can't help but be honest when you've you know you come from a background the way mm. perhaps you have or Adele has or these people have yeah I think um uh, the more I've gotten into the industry the more I have been accepting of these personas people put on before I it just jarred me I was like you're not you who are you but actually 
when I've sat down with artists that are way more established than I am and mm. I've asked them why the persona, why this, why that, most of them have said, let me say eight times out of ten people have said it's almost a protection mm. that they can't bring themselves on stage, themselves offer at home for their mm -hmm. family or for themselves. Um, and so over time, I've I've got it. I've mm. now understood what it's like to be on stage and be called, I don't know, just looking, there's a banana over there, banana, <laughs> and then go home and your name's, I don't know, Madison or whatever. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because you're banana on stage, you're Madison at home. Mm. And having that difference is important. Um, but to carry on that persona for so long, at some point, you're going to break, I believe. For me, in my for, it, for me anyway, I would. And that's why I just choose to be me on and off stage. Mm. Um, because I know there's a, there's going to be a point. I don't want to put makeup on and put this. Uh, there's, there's mornings I don't even want to get out of bed, let alone stand in front of mm. people and start talking to them. So if I continue to be as natural as I can um, and as authentic as I it's can. It's a win-win. It's a, Yeah, I don't have to start stressing myself too tough. But I do understand why people put that on to protect themselves. So it's a... It's a Interesting one. It is an interesting one. Because mm. then people... Would, it's funny, the amount of times I've I've, 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 I've encountered people or the friends I had that em, embodied what they were on stage, so off stage, it's like think it till you become it almost. Yes. You know what I mean? And yeah. then all of a sudden yeah. they become it. And then when they're not seasoned or their time in the sun's gone, mm. yeah, they fall apart. Fully, fully. And the minute you look... The minute you, someone can see you and you might not have all your makeup on and you might have whatever and they'll go, oh, something's wrong with that person or they've fallen off a little bit. Actually, maybe they went to the shop to just get some juice and that's them without all of this on. But you now assume that that person is falling off because you've only seen them when they're all makeuped up and shit. And I ain't got time for that, you know? I I haven't got time for that. And and it's mad because I, I never thought that... I did, I'd say years ago, thought I would have to create a persona for the protection of myself. But like I said, I realised this it's not it for me, man. Holding your head very confidently and and, and I'd be proud of that fact if I, if I was you. Because mm. I'd I'd say that's an asset. Yeah. Particularly to anybody out there listening that, you know, is in a similar position of questioning themselves. I was like, well, you know. I think there is a lot of questioning going on out in the world. Yeah. I mean, let's get into this because... You know, as a female in the industry, as, mm -hmm. as as a world that's constantly churning out a jet stream of bullshit online, yep. like we're we're constantly faced mm -hmm. with, and I see it with young girls, young guys. I mean, you know, it's all become on the screen now, you know, where people used to go on stage and check whether their flies are done up. Now they're checking whether their eyebrows are plucked. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's it's, it's like we ain't really in the same mm. world as, as perhaps we should be, mm. are we? No, no. I I think that it just comes down to authenticity at the end of the day. It comes down to the fact that the the, the world's changed so much since I was young. I don't know how older people like my mum's generation are even coping right now mm. because of the change. Oh, hell yeah. I think that all the time. Literally. Man. And, and yeah. I'm, I've been here for 26 years and I'm still like... Some of the music today, I don't get it. I don't get it. But it's something that everyone loves. Um, but do they? That's the more critical, critical question. Okay. okay. I think the bigger question, I think, is do they care about music? Ooh. So I think that, well, no, they don't. If, if, yeah. if I'm honest, now you said that, no. I don't. I don't think so. I don't again there was more care back in the day people would sit there to listen to bars and to listen to lyricism and to listen to the journey of someone and to sit down and watch a documentary now we've got five second clip of something okay watch that we'll know because there's a whole hour somewhere yeah. that you haven't watched yeah. um but no i don't i don't I, that's a very good point i don't think there is much care for it which is sad because when you're an artist like myself pouring out your whole life mm. um of course i keep certain things to myself because you ain't having the whole of me you, you know ain't having all that never, never. but at the same time 
you know, you're thinking, shit, I've I've just put out two projects or whatever it may be, and not much care going on. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, it's, it's content. And I think when we have these conversations, we actually have to have a look inside ourselves as well. Put the mirror in front of us because mm. truth is... Mm. I'm I'm a I'm a habit of swiping. Mm. And these fingers ain't getting arthritis for no reason. You know what I mean? Like this is like a real thing, isn't it? Yeah, and, yeah. And we do what we do, mm. and that's the reason why. Oh, you like that? You want some more? Yeah. And then the music becomes content, like the video and the photo becomes the. And I guess that filters into the, the younger generations, doesn't it? Of course, yeah. And and you know, I, this is the world we're in, and we have to do what we feel to do in the world that we're in. There are some people who. Um, I know there's one uh, girl on Instagram because I, I use Instagram maybe well, whenever I've got a post and I post and I'm, I breeze don't look at what's going on but there's this one girl who she posts a lot every time I go on my thing I just She's see there. posts all the time what's her, her name? Um, H, 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 H Lola I think in, in, mm -hmm. in the whole name H Lola or H dot Lola or something okay. but she's funny She's so funny. Her posts bring me joy. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, she's posting all the time. And, yeah, she's doing the most to get the content out there, which I personally couldn't do because mm -hmm. I can't give my life to Instagram like that. But her art is serving people mm -hmm. in that way. So it's that, it's that juxtaposition of, yeah, okay, there are people who are giving their whole lives to Instagram or to, to people they don't even know. But part of what they do does serve mm. that inner joy that we we all have mm. and then there are people like me who just want to put something there and then dash if you like it you like it. if you don't see ya mm. do you know what i mean yeah yeah i do know you yeah but your content's out there mm. like you're you're serving the culture mm. and one thing i've noticed is just your broad approach like you're here, you're on you're on a street culture podcast, but then you know you done Charlie Sloth, big up Charlie Sloth, and big up Charlie. There's a, there's a handful of other ones that are really quite you're really broad, and I think mm. the mission brief is pretty, um, it's pretty obvious. Mm. Do you know what I mean it's it's a, it's the um, pursuit of uh, putting out content, yeah, with a uh, with a sophisticated mm. uh, slant on 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 culture. Yeah. You want to fight that fight, isn't it? That's yeah. That's fucking cool. Yeah, when you put it like that. Yeah. And and I, if anything, that's where I find my strength in in being that. You know who you remind me of? Mm. All right. Because you've been on the podcast. I hope this falls correct. Mm -hmm. You're like the UK Star Rock. Do you reckon? Yeah, man. I'll take that. I'll take that. Oh, sick. If okay, I was, that. yeah, I'll if I was to brand position you, yeah. that's where I feel like I'll you're heading. That. I've never been told that before, but I love that. Yeah. Big ups. <laughs> oh, tight. Kel's yeah. dropping the gems you know today, I mean? mate. Three already. Yeah. Three gems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, pick them up later if you don't grab them. <laughs> yeah. But seriously, yeah, I, yeah, I'll I, take I, that. I see it. I see okay. that. I'll take that. I'll take that. I like that. Mm. I like that a lot. Yeah, she comes from a, a very similar pedigree as well. I remember. I think it's her husband. Mm -hmm. I think he's in Rocksteady. Mm. I think it's a real, it's she's the lineage in, in that. It's, mm. it's real. So when you were talking about Queen Latifah and I guess MC Light and, you know, yeah. the, the likes of, yeah, I can totally hear that yeah. in, in what you're bringing. Um, but no one else is doing it. So, of course, that suddenly becomes relevant, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes. Now, here's the thing. It's interesting because... I love, okay, I love garage music, right? Mm. And like I said, I love drum and bass. Mm -hmm. I love country music. Mm. I had this, uh, yesterday I went on a drive. I can't remember why. I left my, I left the yard. Oh yeah, some council tax thing. They're telling me you're something about council tax. I said, you know what? So when I feel a sense of a way, I just take myself in my car and just drive off. Mm. So I was just listening to um, Dolly Parton. Love Dolly Parton. Uh, yeah, hot tight Dolly Parton. Yes. Listen, if I could do a feature with Dolly Parton, that would make my life. Just saying. Yeah, you, know, you know that's like it used to be six degrees of separation. That's the theory, anyway. You know, yes. with social media, it's probably gone down to like two. Do you know what is? Uh, 
It probably has, because because <laughs> six degrees of separation. I've actually done it with a lot of people, mm. and I've th- and it works. Sometimes mm. it's four or five steps, but yeah, with social media, it's probably just one step. Do you know what I mean, DM them. How come that hasn't happened already? How done. come you haven't done that? I don't know if Dolly's on Insta. Is Do- Dolly? Dolly Graham or something like that. Dolly Graham. <laughs> Do you know what? That would be a dream collaboration though. Her music is so raw, like mm. raw. There's a track she's got called "A Letter to Heaven." I won't spoil the end, yeah. But it's a whole story. You're listening, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, sick. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, plot twist. Really? Yeah. But her writing is mad. So I love, I love, I love Dolly Parton and and different genres. There's so many different genres that I love that even though I come from the Queen of Tea for MC Light vibes, mm. little by little, I'm kind of funneling in mm. different genres within in the music because... Again, it's authentic to me. Salsa music, love it. Big up, trust. Do you know what I mean? Without question. Yeah. I mean, it's a beatbox, which is, you know, <laughs> South American rhythms. Do you know what I mean? It's unlike it's... anything. And now there's the genre, which has been around for time, which I didn't know about, called Ama Piano. Go on. South African. Okay, so it's house music, but it's South African house. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> okay. Really? It. I, I have no words. I, I heard it for heard the first hurts. time. Trust me, Ooh. it's crazy. And then I did um uh, an interview. It's funny. I heard my, a friend of mine come around and show me I'm a piano and I was like, wow, my life has changed. What did it have, like on a mixtape or something? Was it just like a whole medley of... She just had a whole 20 tracks that were on her laptop and she was and she's a music head as well. So she was playing. She was like, listen to this, this, that and the other. And then I had an interview with um, DJ Target on One Extra. Hold tight Target. Sign, hold tight Target. And just prior to us talking, he was playing a shed load of Ama Piano. And then afterwards, after the phone call off air, he he gave me a whole list of, of names. And um, I just went through the... And I was like, oh, I'm gutted. Because it's been around for a minute, mm. but it's just now picking up. Well, it's I live under a rock sometimes, but it's just now picking up in my head. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, So all the vibes. So you don't be surprised if I come on country and do drum and bass. I do want to do something like that as well. Yeah. Bear. I, I kind of think to myself, yeah, yo, Dolly, put up the call, take the call. But then I think to myself, yeah, I think you're you'd die and go to heaven. And then we'll probably you'll be out. You'll be like, yo, I've done what I had to do. <laughs> Dolly, yeah. In it. We, we've got it. We we're, we're off to the races. See you later. See you later, world. <laughs> yeah. That's that's me. Quote I made. Probably it's true. It's true. It's true. <laughs> Have you heard of ballet funk? Ballet funk. No, but I sound like it sounds like I'll like it. Mm, it's South American. It's basic. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to send you the mix because please do. You'll blow your mind. He says South American, so I'm happy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah? It's, it's just that okay. business. It's like it's basically like, and this is to my understanding. I've never been there. Um, and it was a while ago when I was introduced, maybe like 2008, 2009. And it blew my mind. It's all the stuff that Diplo and them, Major Laser, were using as samples. Oh, shut up. Yes. Your origin. I'm going to love it. So it's like, tr- 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 and like they're using NPCs to create this instead of turntables. Into the, yeah. Oh, my days. Yeah, it's okay. mad. I've, yeah, okay, I like that. Like there's a beatbox guy on it and all they'll do throughout the whole thing is go, tr- 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 oh. but the beats and the bass. I love that. Just, yeah, you got me excited. Ba- I just love bass. Mm. I love it. Mm-hmm. And it's mad because I'm such a mellow rapper. Mm. But I just, when I'm alone at Yard, yeah, and the door's locked, all you'll be hearing is sight and bassy. Mm. A lot of drum and bass or g- garage music as well. My gosh, mm. I miss garage music. The, mm. the original garage music. Yeah. I, I, I miss music. the happy times. Yes. That's what garage was really, wasn't it? Fully. Yeah, fully. And also just like, it's just, it's in a lane of its own. Mm. Some some genres you can kind of, although they've got their own titles, you can kind of, sort of, yeah, yeah. Uh, but Garage is just there, uh, over there, way over there. It's true, isn't it? Yeah. It's kind of like the rapper's delight of grime. Yeah, it is. That's sick. I have to take that as well. That's sick. <laughs> like all of a sudden. Rapper's like, delight of grime. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you literally, <laughs> it is. It is. That's sick. Love that. That's yeah. sick. I mean, we're very fortunate as... Uh, as Brits to uh, be, be on the front line mm. of genres that are suddenly 
they come out of nowhere and you say, what do I mean, this come from? What? Mm-hmm. But do you think a lot of that is geographical? Do you think as an island we're just bullied and beaten down with it? It's not weather, it's, it's politics. If it's not politics, it's our opinions and shit. It's you know what I mean? It's always something in it. Yeah. Yeah, potentially. Potentially. But at the same time, we've... It's a shame because we, we've got a lot of our own gold here and I say gold metaphorically for, for things that we have created. Mm. Yet we seem to be looking across the pond why is that all the time and i don't know still to this day i can't answer that question i feel like maybe it's because the the hub you know the american Mm. dream whatever Mm. it may be um but it's like guys you know drake has come here Mm. to see what's going on here and he's taking it over there Mm. and you know we have a lot of gold Mm. and that's also something i want to keep in my music is the the britishness of it I think there is this kind of British front that I don't often... I could be fucking way out of my depth in saying, but from my perception of it, we're looking on the wrong side of the pond. Mm. We need to be looking at Germany and France and see how they've created their cultures. This is what I've been told. This is what I've been told. And in fact, my focus is on when I look at the well I don't but management look at the stats for me of where I'm played most and whatever um Germany and France and Belgium these mm. guys are on it way more than mm. people in the UK mm. um and then America actually there's there's quite a lot in terms of like New York or, or LA but mm. Germany, Belgium and France, um, they have... The French rap culture is mad. Mm. It is mad. Incredible. It's, it's, it's amazing. It is amazing. It's amazing. And same with Germany, but mm. I'm more versed with the with the French side of things. So, um, yeah, you're right. I think we're, we're looking the wrong direction mm. completely. Yeah. You thought about doing touring over there eventually? You got in it. 100%. That's... For me, I'm not really... I want to build core... I don't even like the word followers. I don't like the word fans. I don't need to think of a new, a new name, squad, collectives. Collect. That's a good that. one, isn't it? I like that. I love that because mm. followers. I just I don't like the idea of someone following me. Mm. I'm not a person to follow. <laughs> it's I creepy. Can barely shit. look after my own life, let alone everyone else. Don't follow me, please. <laughs> and then a fan is a bit is no. I don't like that either. Mm. So yeah, collectives. Yeah, I, I would that. like a core group of collectives where. They they are fully in to the music, mm. you know. Um, I've had I've had uh, French collectives um, message me with like the breakdown of the lyrics to to make sure that they understood them correctly. And, Whoa, that's and I was cold. and that for me, uh, I love that. I love. I've never that. heard that before. That's so sick. Yeah, I love that. I love that. So definitely, when when touring is go ahead, that's where I'll be. You're like an entry hole to people discovering. Mm things mm. yeah that's where that hip-hop aesthetic comes into mm. it. yeah yeah you're approachable and you're easy to listen to but with enough guts mm. to, to to be current to be mm. no, relative I to all your that. contemporaries isn't it mm. yo it's a fine line it's a fine line it's a fine line but do you love it yes I love it because I feel like I feel like I've known from young that what I'm doing will do have done will be and I say this with no big head but just with truth historical talk that shit yeah always and the reason I say that is because I've got something within me that has my eyes this way, whilst I think from my perspective, not all artists, but the majority are looking this way. Mm. There's a few of us who I speak to, heroes of mine or people that I'm into, whoever it is, where our eyes are like readjusting to a different side of life and a different path. And although, you know, I have talked smack and, and said it's hard because if everyone else's eyes are over here, it's hard mm. to be like, guys, this way, mm. if you're all used to that way. Mm. Um, I just, I'm very comfortable with the person I am and the music I'm going to make because I know it's just going to slap. Mm. And I know my intentions are pure as well. Mm. I know my intentions are pure and I'm not trying to harm anyone. 
I'm just trying to heal through music, but also be real about addiction. You know, there's there's a lot there's a lot of music out there that talks about certain drugs and whatever and or alcohol, whatever it may be, but there's almost this ego about it or this this um Paint, painting it in, in a positive light when if you've been through addiction it is not a fun game a glorifying at all glorifying yeah. that's that's it that's it um and and so that's my avenue i just want to come with the real but at the same time i did an interview actually a couple of weeks back and they were saying with my lyrics that i jump from something quite humorous to then rehab hmm. and then from rehab to talking about leaving church but then from leaving church I'm talking about you know I haven't paid my rent or whatever it may be and that's what I want to maintain it's not just this you know get a megaphone and start telling people about addiction and, and life but also just bringing in all the different elements mm-hmm. of, of, of who I am if, it feels like it's just like the beginning of what you're doing mm. like what you're saying there is just like yo you're this is your journey. This is part of what you're doing, and the the, the fact that you're figuring out these um, this commentary that mm. people as people are saying, it's like it's that that doesn't correlate. But you're saying one thing is it's like yeah, that's, you're constantly striving and developing and and moving ebbs and flows. The whole of figuring it out. Yeah, that's like gold to anybody that's like coming on intro. Mm. To an artist, isn't it? It's like yeah. the best. It's like, yeah, yeah true, actually. I'm early enough, I'm checking this out, and it's like, yo, this is, yeah. you know, this is sick because then they thought, yeah, it's sick. Yeah. It's taken me a while to realize that that's kind of my USP. Mm. But now I know that that's how I will continue to, to, to be. Yeah. And I'm a very complicated person inside. Like, I have. It's as if I have like 10 different people living in my... Have you seen Split, the film? No. Don't watch it. <laughs> it's a great film, but it's, it's, it's one guy and he's just got bare personalities. But he acts it. I, can't, I don't know his, what his name is, but he's a sick actor. But he's just he just acts these different persons. And it's like in my head, I've got so many... I've, I've got the girl who's half Nigerian who experienced Nigeria mm. um, in its rawest form. But then I've got the girl this side who's been to to private school but then I've got the girl this side who is very strong but then the girl who has also been taken advantage of um but then the girl who suffered abuse from my dad but then the girl who would punch some well I'm trying to woosa zen myself but the girl who would you know fight if necessary Mm. so all of these things I'm channeling into the music instead of just saying I'm a girl who is a girl from Wales, lives in London, and just going down this mm. one-way route. I'm trying to bring all, all that in. And I think sometimes it's a blessing, but sometimes it's a curse. People yeah, get confused, cold. like, who are you? What are you? Mm. You know? Mm. And it, and I guess that's, like you're saying, that if you really deconstruct the, the content of the lyrics and the content of the, the music mm. over a period, yeah, I guess there is this, uh, uh, not crisis, there's an identification lapse that happens with yeah. each moment mm. and you're just like yeah it's, it's exciting because it's just over a matter of time all of a sudden this thing will just like, be fine tuned yeah like, <laughs> yeah and Lock that's in. what we're trying to get to yeah. as yeah. opposed to all, all of the different facets yeah one track at a time yeah exactly yeah. oh I think we'll park it up there. thank you so yeah. fucking much thank you Dude, I had a great time it. yeah I had a great time that's a vibe. That huh? was, it was. Nice cup of tea as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All tight. All the regulars. You know what time is. You don't mean to give it anything less than the quality of conversation we had here. Thanks so much for passing too, Dave. Welcome. Thank you for having Smacked me. Smacked it. Loved it. Killer Killer Podcast, Ally. It was our fashion. Don't talk to anybody I wouldn't. All right. Stay lucky. Easy. <laughs>